One topic that doesn't get much attention is powering your Raspberry Pi. This is partly because it's rather straightforward, though some misconceptions exist and there are some things to watch out for. To power your Raspberry Pi, you will need an AC adapter and a micro USB cable. The AC adapter must be able to output 5 volts DC, and it is advised that it's rated to 700 milliamps. Here I've chosen a 1 amp adapter, but any value above 700 milliamps will do. This is because the current rating is a maximum value. That is, a 700 milliamp adapter can at most provide 700 milliamps, though most of the time it will only need to provide about 400 milliamps to the Raspberry Pi. You may wish to get a smaller AC adapter. This one will still work, though expect the small one to get hotter due to a tight placement of internal components. Next up, the USB cable. The standard USB connector connects to the AC adapter, and the micro USB connector attaches to the Raspberry Pi. Sounds straight enough, but not all USB cables are created equal. Here I've cut open a USB cable. The red wire is the 5 volt wire, and the black wire is the ground. The other cables are for data. So our Raspberry Pi, when it's powering, only needs to use the red and black cable. The rest are useless. Unfortunately, not all USB cables are designed for high currents, as some need only send small currents along those data wires. For instance, this cable on the bottom has a much smaller 5 volt wire, which means more resistance. Not only that, it's likely made out of aluminium instead of copper, resulting in an even greater resistance. Now, if the resistance in the USB cable is too high, there will be a significant voltage drop from the AC adapter to your Raspberry Pi, resulting in an underpowered Pi, which might not work properly. So let's test out these two wires. For the test, I will use this battery pack, which is connected to a DC-DC converter. It's best to avoid measuring the AC adapter directly, as a mistake dealing with mains electricity can be lethal. First, I'll test the thicker wire. So 5.5 volts is coming from the DC-DC converter. Now to measure the voltage across the Raspberry Pi, I need to connect across TP1, which is located here, and TP2, which is located over here, and I get 4.89. Okay, let's try the thinner cable. Let's again measure the voltage across the converter. It's the same, 5.05 as expected, and now TP1 and TP2. We have 4.69. Now this might not seem that significant, but the Raspberry Pi should run between 4.8 and 5.2. So we're actually under specification with this wire. Also, if we use the 5 volt pin on our GPIO header, that 5 volt pin will actually be outputting 4.69 because TP1, TP2, the voltage across that is the same as the voltage across the 5 volt pin and ground. So there you have it. Make sure you get an AC adapter with the appropriate voltage and current rating and try to get a thicker USB cable. This one was 22 gauge, though I imagine a thinner wire such as 24 gauge would still do a pretty good job. The best bet, measure the voltage across your Raspberry Pi using TP1 and TP2 and then you'll know for sure what voltage is coming into your Raspberry Pi.